Welcome back to Les Schwab Tire Center's Outdoor GPS. It's time for Owens Field Report, sponsored by Les Schwab Tire Centers. Now we're going to get to a couple of live reports that we have here in just a couple of minutes, so bear with us on that. We've got Stuart on the Columbia uh, with a live report, Mark as well with another live report, and then Richard from the Puget Sound area, uh, who we talk to every so often here on the show, but we're going to get to that in a second. First things first, let's just show you the, the fish counts real quick. Uh, make sure that you're aware of what's really happening out there the last couple of days. And yesterday, of course, uh, well not of course, we showed you uh, Friday's number at 15.6, yesterday uh, being Saturday at 14.6, still very, very good numbers. And when you were, if we were to show you the 10 year, which we're not, it is very much right on track with that 10 year average. We're a little ahead of schedule though. So it's all good news. And if you're paying attention to Steelhead uh, at 118,000, Bill, that's pretty dang good, man. We haven't had that for over a decade. Uh, yeah, for the areas that are open, if you're going to be chasing steelhead, you should have some pretty decent opportunities for summer steelhead. I'm still holding out hopes that I might be able to get out there myself. Uh, river levels, uh, we'll show you that real quickly before we start getting into a couple other things. It did bounce a little, which I thought was interesting. Uh, yesterday, I mean, not much. I mean, you're only talking six inches or so, but overall, uh, the Columbia is still very low. Uh, I'm going to be wobbler fishing this week. That's the plan, uh, at least in between trying to find some doves around somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. That's such a long drive. That'd be nice. Uh, but make sure you pay attention to that if you're going to go out. If you plan on dropping the, the hook, you know, you're going to want that outgoing tide. If not, of course, you control. Um, now, there is a CCA golf tournament that's coming up. Yesterday, we mentioned this. It is the 7th of September. Uh, it's a great opportunity to meet the folks from uh, the CCA if you haven't done so in the past. Uh, and this is just a nice, easy way that you can go have some fun, maybe learn a little bit about the CCA and how you can help them and how they already uh, help us in so many ways. And don't forget, send my friend Jason uh, an email over there at Procure and maybe have a chance to win uh, that weekly uh, prize pack. Now, before we get to weather with Katie here in a couple of minutes, uh, first things first, Otto's Sausage, Sausage Kitchen. You've heard me talk about Otto's here for 16 years. Jeez. I love it. Uh, Otto's is changing his MO, Jerry, is changing their MO a little bit. A lot of us take our deer and our elk to them, uh, and we typically are able to bring them in whole, or at least quartered, whatever it might be. Now he's requesting that all of those animals are brought in uh, boned, deboned. Okay, so it'll be an interesting transition for some on that, uh, but just making sure that we get that information out there. He asked specifically if we could do that for him, and I am absolutely going to do whatever we can. Uh, to do so. Also yesterday we had the folks in from uh, uh, Fisherman's and I was unable to mention their upcoming on September 12th. They've got uh, an addicted bash. Those guys do all these things all over the place and they're going to do another one over at Fisherman's at the Delta Park store on the 12th of September. So keep that in mind. Put it on your calendar and go hang out with Cameron and Marlon and all the folks from uh, addicted fishing. Uh, but let's check in with Stuart Carr. Stuart is a good friend of mine. He's the guy that makes the best rod holders, leaners. Stuart, what would you call them? Are they rod holders or are we? Just, are they a, a rod leaner? <laughs> They're on every boat the, there is now. Rod rack. Rod racks. There it is. Got it. Rod rack. I'm gonna make sure I get it right. Uh, but Stuart's out on the uh, Columbia this morning and you're already having some success, Stuart. What's going on? We're three for two. We got one coho that was kicked Nikki's butt. We couldn't keep it because it was a native. Okay. And then uh, two Chinook. So you're two for three? Is that right? Two for three so far. Okay. Now, you don't have to tell us where you at or the rock that you guys were all standing on, but how are you fishing? Are you 360 in it? Are you on the anchor? Uh, what are you doing? We are 360. This is the first time I've tried out the, the Brad's Evolution Flashers because I haven't been able to get my hands on them for quite a while. They're in high so demand. I'm trying them out today, and hey, they work. Yes, they do. How do you like the bumper uh, on there? I I like the breakaway on there because it, it doesn't come off unless something really pulls on it hard. You get snagged or you got a fish on. Yes, yeah, and they, there's a reason why they're hard to get a hold of everyone. They just get sold out quickly, uh, but they are very effective. Uh, we've all proven that, I believe. Uh, okay, so. You're on the Columbia. Uh, how's the crowd? Are you seeing a lot of boats out there, or is it kind of open? It's pretty busy. Uh, this is probably the most, uh, if you look down where the, the hog lines are, there's quite a few guys anchored. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that at all. Next question for you that I got to ask, because it's been an, an issue all the way up and down the river, especially since we had that high wind uh, on Thursday. How's the grass? 
Uh, the grass has been cleared out by us. So everybody that wants to come out here and fish from now on, they should be cleared out and ready to go. Uh, what he's meaning, we've, everyone, we've is that... we pretty well uh, yeah. mowed the lawn, if you will. Yeah, they're it's they're going bad. through quite a, quite a bit of grass. And that's just, it's that, that time of year. And when you have that high wind like we did, uh, the, especially an east wind, it'll just load it up yeah, from Bonneville We're down. having to check for grass about every 10 minutes, pretty much. Yep, pretty much. Now, are you seeing multiple fish get caught? Is it kind of slow? Would you call it a good bite? What, what are you seeing? I... I'd say it's slow for the amount of fish I think are around mm -hmm. and the amount of boats. We've probably only seen five or eight others netted, and that's about it. Uh, last question, Stuart. What are you fishing behind those evolution flashers? Are you fishing spinners? Are you fishing stuffer baits? What are you fishing? Spinners. I was going to bring use some stuffer baits this morning, but I forgot the t tuna to put them in. <laughs> Okay, that helps. So we're just doing the spinner thing. Well, worst case scenario, some of the Procure gel inside there, it does work that way. I would recommend uh, the Salmon Slammer gel personally without any meat in there at all. That, that, that does work well at times as, uh, as well. Uh, Stuart, thanks for the live report from the river. We appreciate it, man. Good luck, and I uh, hope you guys can get a couple more fish. If I don't see you before you head for hunting, good luck to you. Yeah, hey, you too. I know you're prepared and ready to go. Your trailer's already all stocked up and ready to go. Yeah. Wish I could see We're that. leaving tomorrow, I think. There you go. Stuart, good luck. Be safe, man. At least you'll have some fish to take up to camp. All right, let's go ahead and check in with Mark. Uh, Mark is also uh, on the Columbia. Mark, uh, if you can hear me okay, what, what area are you actually on on the Columbia, if you don't mind letting us know? We are fishing basically at the mouth of the issue. The mouth of what? Does the shoot? Oh, okay. You're up on the east side. How was uh, how was the fish? Are you already done? No, unfortunately, it's been kind of. There was like a good early morning bite, but then it quieted it down. We've only seen about six fish caught so far today. Uh, I'm gonna guess there's probably about 60, 70 boats here. Well, there's no shortage of competition, then, is there? No, sir. How are you actually fishing, Mark? Are you trolling, hover fishing? What are you doing? We are trolling all 360 spinners, um, water, water temps are about 69. 69. And uh, the wind's being really nice to us, so there's just a, barely a little ripple this morning. How nice is that? You don't get to say that very often, Mark, do you? No, and it's predicted we're blowing 30 tomorrow afternoon, so this is probably one of our op few opportunities left this season. Did you happen to notice if there was any boats that were going up the Deschutes steelhead fishermen at all, or are you even able to see it from the area that you're at? I, I didn't see anybody going in, coming up into the river. Um, there's obviously people coming out. Yeah, gotcha. <clears throat> yeah, of course, definitely. Yeah. Mark, so it's, not a, it's a little slow up there. Are you marking fish? Because there's obviously been a ton of fish that have gone over Bonneville heading that way. We did, and we have marked some fish. We're, we've tried uh, basically over by the water, the uh, warm water sanctuary area that side, and also over here by Miller Island. We've marked quite a few fish, especially over more closer to the mouth of the chute. Uh, everybody, but everybody's pretty spread out. There's people that are trolling probably a half mile above the mouth of the chute. Oh wow! But so yeah, we got a lot of people spread everywhere. Uh, there's probably twenty. 20 or so boats egging. Mark, I, last, qu last question I got for you, Mark. Where do you like putting, are you putting in a Slilo? Or are you putting in there at the Deschutes? Or where are you putting in at when you're, when you're fishing there? We put in at Slilo. Gotcha. And it, it, you know, it's a little bit of an adjustment for, I asked that question because I was asked that myself this past week on our Facebook page. Uh, I did recommend Slilo because it is easier to get there. Of course, if the wind comes up, that can be an issue. Uh, but getting in and out of the Deschutes can sometimes be a challenge, <laughs> especially if you don't know exactly where that uh, channel is. Exactly. And it has changed over the last couple of years, so it is a little bit different than it has been in the past. Absolutely. Mark, hey, thank you for calling and sharing. We appreciate getting a report from up above Bonneville. Thanks for that. I hope that we can hear from you again next weekend if you're out. Hopefully so. We're planning on trying to get out again. Very good. Mark, be safe out there. Good okay. luck. Make something happen before that wind kicks up, because when you can be out there and it's not windy, it doesn't happen all that often. Okay, real quickly, before we got to go over and check out what our weather's going to be, Quickly, I hope, although I will admit, Richard loves to share good reports, and it takes a minute. Uh, but, Richard, it looks like you got a report from Puget Sound. What's going on up there? Owen? Yes, sir. the best coho fishing I've seen in probably seven years. No kidding! It's, it's epic. The last three mornings, 
I'd spend about a half hour fishing for six to eight fish. So it's doubles. As soon as you get it down, it's it's been pretty unreal. God, I hope that's a sign of a pile of silver still working their way south coming into the Columbia, not to be greedy. <laughs> All the, I, a lot I, of those I, fish, I, everyone, will you know, go to the rivers up there in the Puget Sound area, of course. I'm just, again, being greedy. Uh, how are you catching them, Richard? Same way that you would be uh, going after Chinook? Um, no, uh, changing it up a little bit. Definitely speeding it up to 3.5, 4 knots uh, wow. cross current, not, not going with the current, but east to west. Try not to get stuck going into the current or with the current too long. You're going to put your bait in front of more fish by trolling cross currents using Gibbs Pro Troll or uh, Gibbs Flashers and the Maddy color, M A D D Y, with uh, 26 inch liters. Uh, Silver Horde Ace High Flies and Silver Horde OAL 12 R Squids. Uh, Richard, last question I got that I have time for you. Um, are they good size grade fish right now? A little bit small still? What are you running across? Well, when you don't have a million pink salmon in front of them, it's uh, they're good size. They're nice big hook nose this morning. Biggest one was probably 12 pounds this morning. That'll work. Anything that's double digits yeah, so. in the salt water, especially for a silver, that's a dandy. And Yeah, and we we still got that one area, Marine Area Ten, where you can keep wild or hatchery. So I think I think your best bet is to go fish area ten and not worry about having to release and kill so many wilds in Marine Area Nine and Marine Area Eight too. Uh, great advice as well, as always, Richard. We appreciate your phone call and your report. Uh, like always, be safe out there, and I uh, hope you get off the water with all your fish and get back out there and have some fun, Richard. We appreciate you, as always, sharing some reports from up in, up north out of that Puget Sound area. Okay, I've already slowed Katie down way too much. Katie, uh, I know that we've got some interesting weather, and yeah. uh, I mentioned yesterday, I'm over it. Yesterday, I had to go out and do some things, and I looked at my on my truck. It was 96 degrees. Yeah. I said, forget it. I'm not doing anything. Well, then do it either tomorrow or Tuesday because we're back to the 90s by midweek. Figures. <laughs> yeah, we're just we're not done with the summer yet. We had that kind of couple weeks of what we called false fall, fake fall, and then now we're in this heat wave. Should end today, but we only see a couple days where temperatures are either cool or average before we heat up for a couple of additional days. So let's walk through the conditions with you. This is the low pressure center that's coming toward us that passes over us tonight through tomorrow. Brings us cooler conditions cloudy skies and a chance for some showers then as soon as it comes in it goes away and now we have a ridge and you see how this gets a bit darker that is representative of a warmer atmosphere and that's Wednesday and Thursday that that's with us and it's not until we get to Friday that you start to see that peeling back and allowing things to cool back in the atmosphere for today if you're headed out don't be worried about it being 100 degrees unless you're in the gorge with the Dalles that's another place and the only place that I can see right now that looks Looks like it could hit triple digits for the metro and valleys, the upper 80s, low 90s, and then cool cloud cover across the coast, uh, low 60s to the low 70s. Here's the cloud cover that we've had this morning clearing out. You'll notice we don't go completely clear for just a bit of time this afternoon, and then the marine layer comes in Monday morning, stays with us through pretty much the entire day. You'll notice some drips here or there, and then Tuesday when that high pressure starts building back in, it's clear and back to the races with those warmer temperatures. We do have a tiny bit of accumulation that we could see tomorrow morning and maybe tomorrow night, so only a couple hundredths of an inch. But here you see it, it's just that one quick cool down, then it's back to the 80s, does not last long because we could be back to about the mid 80s by next weekend. Next weekend looks kind of nice to me. I'll, I'll, I'll take all the eights that we can get. Yeah. <laughs> it's the nines and ones we got to get away from. Yeah, there's only a couple of eights on here, but I'm good with it too. It'll work. Katie, thank you very much. As always, have a great week. All right, we're going to cut to break, everyone. When we come back, we're going to have Mr. Bill Herzog here in the studio. We're going to talk about a number of different things with Bill, so don't go anywhere. Stick with us here on KPDX for more Outdoor GPS. We'll be right back. Outdoor GPS is brought to you by P-Line, because we fish. By Hawk and Fishing, perfection in fishing gear. And by Haxton's Canvas and Upholstery, the trusted name of the Pacific Northwest.